And finally, the NAACP is not happy this morning about a European ad for Sony's new portable PlayStation. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 outrageous video game marketing fails. For this list, we'll be looking at instances where game companies attempted to promote their products but widely missed the mark for what was appropriate or what their fans wanted. Which of these marketing failures shocked you the most? Head to the comments and let us know. Number 10. The Xbox One Reveal The one that makes your TV more intelligent. The one system for a new generation. Despite the red ring of death, Microsoft's Xbox 360 was a phenomenal console. But even if there wasn't a ton of hype leading up to its next system, we still would have been disappointed by this. Microsoft held a press conference in May of 2013 to reveal the Xbox One and talk about its features, which had almost nothing to do with video games. Over half the presentation was devoted to television integration and the new and improved Kinect, which no one really cared about. Even worse, a required internet connection and restrictions over used games made pretty much everyone mad. Microsoft had to reverse these decisions due to outrage and worked an entire generation to earn back its goodwill. An Xbox One will make your games and TV come to life in ways that haven't been possible. Number nine, fake outrage over Dante's Inferno. But that's not possible. The Bishop assured us. Dante's Inferno is an action game loosely based on the first section of Dante Alighieri's Divine Comedy. And to drum up excitement for the game, publisher EA hired a group of fake protesters to gather outside E3 2009. The group stated the game glorified eternal damnation and held signs with statements like, just say Inferno. Not only did the stunt annoy gamers, but actual Christians as well. EA clearly didn't learn its lesson. At Comic-Con a few months later, it held the objectifying Sin to Win contest. Fans were encouraged to take lustful pictures with booth girls in order to win a sinful night with two hot girls, a limo service, paparazzi, and a chest full of booty. Gross. Your wisdom cannot comprehend her. Number 8. THQ Nordic's HN AMA THQ once released 10,000 red balloons in San Francisco in honor of Homefront, a major hazard to the environment, and earned it a $7,000 fine. But still, after a brand merge to become THQ Nordic, this marketing decision was far more questionable. With upcoming Darksiders 3 DLC, two higher-ups of the company hosted an AMA on 8chan, a site famous for featuring insanely controversial content. It was even blacklisted by Google in 2015, information that would have been easily available if anyone had bothered to check. The decision caused immediate backlash, but the AMA went on as planned. And in between questions about the actual game, the AMA saw questions too despicable to quote here. Number 7. God of War 2's Greek Launch Party it Stomps you in the back of your head. Basically, you enjoy every minute of it. As part of the marketing campaign for the sequel to its widely successful, widely violent God of War, Sony threw a party in Athens. It was a good idea in theory, celebrating a new franchise in the home of its hero and theming it around Kratos' era. But in practice, it came under some deserved fire. Pictures from the event showed up in the official UK PlayStation magazine, showing the dead body of a goat as a centerpiece. The Daily Mail fans the outrage flames, though Sony refuted its coverage and pointed out some inaccuracies. Still, maybe don't include the body of a cute animal at your party. It's bound to piss some people off. Number 6. Black Ops 3's Fake News Stunt In 2015, Activision and Treyarch seemingly wanted a less traditional way to get fans excited for the campaign in the upcoming Black Ops 3. But they made just about the worst decision possible on how to do so. 
The Call of Duty Twitter account was renamed Current Events Aggregate, complete with a new logo and tagline, where we bring you real news. The account then proceeded to tweet out false news about a terrorist attack in Singapore to its nearly 3 million followers. The idea was clearly to give fans a taste of story events. But considering terrible things like this happen all over the world all the time, the stunt was distasteful to say the absolute least. Number 5. Ubisoft's Accidental Bomb Scare To promote 2014's Watch Dogs, Ubisoft sent small safes of promotional gifts to Australian news outlets with notes to check their voicemails. But no one did proper research, as one safe ended up at 9MSN, which doesn't even cover video games. The journalist who received the safe didn't use voicemail, and after finding that no other similar outlets received the safe, which began to beep, 9MSN thought the worst and called a bomb defusal squad. You'd think Ubisoft would learn from marketing stunts like this. Four years prior, it promoted Splinter Cell Conviction by hiring an actor to show up to a New Zealand bar dressed as an in-game enemy with a fake gun. Because nothing builds up game hype like fearing for your life. Sooner or later, gotta cut you down. I have a message to those who stand in my way. Pray. Number 4. Acclaimed Speeding Ticket Coverage Before it went bankrupt, Acclaim pulled some pretty bold marketing stunts. To promote Torok Evolution, it offered $10,000 to the first parents to name their child Turok. It also attempted to buy space on gravestones to promote Shadow Man 2. But the most actively terrible marketing ploy Acclaim ever pulled was for its 2002 racing game Burnout 2 Point of Impact. Acclaim offered to cover any speeding ticket issued to UK drivers as long as it was issued on the game's launch date. This was seen by most sane people as encouraging reckless driving. To hell with everyone else's safety, just make sure you go buy our new game. Utterly shameful. Number 3. Wesker and Son Butcher Shop Let's go check it out. There are a lot of upsetting things about Resident Evil 6, including this marketing stunt. To get fans excited for the upcoming action horror game, Capcom redressed the Smithfield Market in East London to be the Wesker and Son Human Butchery. For two days, fans could purchase a variety of meats made to look like various human body parts. Torsos, hands, eyeballs, legs, you name it, they probably had it. And the recreations actually looked pretty accurate, which just made the whole thing a lot more gross. What's worse is that widespread disgust likely overshadowed the pop-up's good cause. All proceeds went to the Limbless Association, a UK-based charity founded to help amputees. Just write a check next time. Number 2. Hitman's Facebook Assassinations This one is just plain mean. Shortly after the launch of Hitman Absolution, developer IO Interactive released a Facebook app that allowed users to put fake hits out on their friends. It was a weird marketing decision, but how the app actually operated was way worse. Users could choose from different physical descriptors, which could be incredibly offensive, like a muffin top or bad hair. You could also choose the reasoning behind the hit, like the fact they smell bad. Targeted friends would then receive a special video on their wall using their photos and details, as well as showing Agent 47 kill them. Backlash was immense and immediate, prompting IO Interactive to take down the app the same day it was launched. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few dishonorable mentions. Your mom hates Dead Space 2. Mom's reacting to video game violence was dated long before this campaign. 
Oh, yeah, I'll show you my opinion. This is, it's, it's gross. I hated it. The Sega Saturn surprise American launch. Backfired when retailers weren't ready and Sony announced the PlayStation's cheaper price. <laughs> caused confusion about whether it was a new console or a Wii add-on. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The White is Coming campaign. And finally, the NAACP is not happy this morning about a European ad for Sony's new portable PlayStation. Honestly, it doesn't get much worse than this. Sony's PSP released in Japan in 2004 in the standard black color. But in 2006, to promote the upcoming white version, it released a series of billboards in the Netherlands that were highly insensitive. They featured two models, one black and one white, in racially charged stances. The most widespread one featured the white model aggressively grabbing the black model's face, accompanied by the tagline, PlayStation Portable White is coming. It's baffling how anyone who had anything to do with the marketing didn't realize what this looked like. But everyone else did as soon as the billboards went up. Sony issued a non-apology, but nevertheless removed the ads. <laughs> In the mood for more awesome gaming content? Be sure to check out this video here on Mojo Plays. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.